Colorectal cancer is actually a growth that occurs uh, from the lining of the colon. Uh, this type of growth is malignant, and by malignant, it means that it can grow gradually and eventually spread to other parts of the body. And that, in essence, is the definition of cancer. Uh, it's extremely common. Uh, it is uh, the third commonest cause of cancer-related deaths uh, worldwide, uh, and in Singapore, it is the number one uh, cancer in terms of incidence, both in men and women. Uh, the signs and symptoms uh, can range from uh, absolutely none to that of uh, very dramatic uh, clinical um, uh, syndromes. Uh, I would start when the cancer is early, typically there's very, very little uh, uh, symptom. Uh, the commonest would be noticing of blood in the stools. Uh, the, this symptom is very often in the local context mistaken for hemorrhoids or piles. Uh, the more sinister symptoms would be a change of bowel habits. And when I say change in bowel habits, it means that uh, your bowel habits uh, that were normal over the preceding uh, months or years have changed in terms of either frequency, uh, texture of the stools, uh, or color, or nature of the stools. Uh, a one-off change is typically not significant, but if it's persistent over a period of weeks or months, uh, then that is quite suspicious. Uh, other uh, uh, symptoms of uh, colorectal cancer may be abdominal bloating, abdominal discomfort, and of course, like any cancer, if you have uh, loss of appetite and loss of weight, that is usually a very suspicious uh, symptom. The Commonest cause of colorectal cancer are actually polyps of the colon. So worldwide, more than 90% of colorectal cancers arise from what is known as a polyp. Now, a polyp is essentially a growth from the lining of the colon that is benign. Benign meaning it has no capacity to spread to the other parts of the body and it has no capacity to invade into the deeper tissues. So 90% of all cancers developed from these polyps. Other types of uh, causes of colorectal cancer would be genetic. Uh, about 5% of all colorectal cancers have a genetic background, meaning that it is hereditary. Uh, it's got to do with some specific abnormalities in the person's genes that predisposes them to forming colorectal cancer. Uh, now, when we talk about uh, etiology, that means what actually causes colorectal cancer, uh, it is mul multifactorial. Uh, just like any other cancer, certain factors predisposes one to uh, developing colorectal cancer. It is, um, does not mean that if you do this, or you have this, or you participate in this type of activity, you will get colorectal cancer. But uh, all these factors increases the chance of you developing colorectal cancer. So the commonest uh, would be uh, lifestyle, um, obesity, uh, a sedentary lifestyle where you don't exercise much, uh, a diet that is very rich in animal fat, red meat, and uh, processed foods. Um, these are all uh, lifestyle factors that are associated with an increased risk of colorectal cancer. Uh, certainly, if you have a history of uh, colonic polyps, 
that alone also predisposes you to uh, development of colorectal cancer. And then of course, like I mentioned before, uh, genetics. If you have a family history of uh, colorectal cancer, uh, you are at a higher risk of um, developing. And when we talk about family history, we specifically refer to first degree relatives. So it's either your parents, your siblings, uh, those are first degree relatives. Uh, second degree relatives like your cousins, uncles, aunts, and all that, uh, it's not associated with uh, that high a risk to the individual. Uh, what is common uh, in the West, but not so common in Singapore, is a group of diseases called inflammatory bowel disease, uh, specifically ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Now, uh, if one has that uh, for a long period of time, over 10 years or more, you are also predisposed to development of colorectal cancer. Screening for colorectal cancer is advocated uh, internationally by the numerous uh, gastroenterological as well as uh, colorectal surgical societies, and they are all unanimous uh, in proposing that uh, screening be commenced from the age of 50 years onwards uh, for individuals with no prior personal or family history of colorectal cancer or personal or family history of colonic polyps. Uh, meaning, if you are well, you have no significant history, no symptoms, you should start screening uh, from the age of 50 onwards. However, if you have personal or family history of colorectal cancer or polyps, then the age of screening uh, would possibly be earlier. Um, the guidelines typically uh, relate to the age at which your family member developed colorectal cancer. So in other words, if you have a family member who developed colorectal cancer at the age of 55, for example, then uh, you should start your screening 10 years before that. Diet plays a very significant part of colonic health. So what we typically advocate to all our patients is that you should have a balanced, healthy diet. Anything in excess in anyone is always bad. So the balanced diet uh, can be found in any nutritional literature. Uh, it must contain all the various uh, major uh, dietary groups, but I think for colonic health significantly would be uh, fiber. Uh, and fiber meaning you have your fruits and vegetables, you have your greens, uh, and there are some proponents of even probiotics uh, nowadays to enhance or improve your colonic health. Now what all these uh, nutritional uh, groups uh, do is that they improve the transit of the waste that goes through your colon. So with increased fiber, uh, it just allows you to excrete the waste uh, in a timely fashion as opposed to keeping it in the colon. There is evidence or belief uh, in the scientific community, uh, community that if you keep too much waste in your colon for too long, uh, some of that toxic material has some impact on the lining of your colon, thereby triggering off an event that causes growth in the colon and leading to polyps and subsequently colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is diagnosed primarily using the modality called uh, colonoscopy. That alone is the most conclusive method of confirming colorectal cancer. I say that because the colonoscopy enables the doctor to directly visualize the growth, and more importantly, he is able to obtain tissue for 
histology or what you call biopsy. Uh, ultimately, it is the biopsy report that confirms that it is colorectal cancer. Other types of uh, investigation modality may include uh, CT scans. It can include uh, barium enemas, which is a type of x-rays. But ultimately, uh, the clinching point for diagnosis is the biopsy. And the only current method of obtaining a biopsy is through the colonoscopy. Yeah,